So is this cheap anvil any good? Will it hold up? Let's find out. Now the company Vivor sent this anvil to me free. They asked me to do a review on it, so I agreed. Like I said in a previous video, you gotta take these reviews with a grain of salt. I didn't pay for the anvil, they sent it to me for free. So you may expect some bias in there, but I explained to them that I wanna be true to my followers and I'm gonna be upfront and honest about what I think about this anvil. But what I'm not gonna do is treat this anvil any differently than I would my antique anvil or my anvil that I purchased several years ago. I don't try to abuse those anvils. I never tested them by banging on them with hammers all over them. In other words, I've never tested my purchased anvil or my antique anvil with hammers and mauls and sledgehammers beating and banging on them to see if I can damage them. So I'm gonna treat this anvil the same way, see if it will hold up to normal forging and blacksmithing work. We'll go over some of the pros and cons. Now, even my old antique anvil has damage on it. And the one I purchased several years ago has a couple spots on it. So you can damage any kind of anvil if you try. Some more than others. I know there are some cheap anvils out there from another cheap store that you can hit it with a hammer a couple good times and it's done. But I've seen several reviews on this anvil and I've mentioned it too in that previous video. It had pretty good reviews. So I'm glad to be able to test and review it myself. So let's take a look at it. So right out of the box, first thing I notice, it's got some rough casting. I mean, you've got a lot of burrs here and you can tell where filler was put in, in these areas. Face looks smooth, no dings, no damage during shipping. Obviously one thing I see and I've seen in other reviews is this hole here in the horn. It's not really a pritchell hole, it's too big, it's in the wrong place, comes out into the face of the anvil. Looks like just where you could bolt it down. Same over here with the hardy. The hardy probably won't work with my tools. It may, if I file this out, there's got a lot of burr overhang here. But it looks like it's also for access to bolting it down. But the face is good and flat, no dings or damage, and it's nice and wide. It's like my horseshoe anvil that has a wide face on it, which is why I originally bought it for bladesmithing. I don't do horseshoeing and don't do a lot of blacksmithing work. So as far as having a pritchell hole here, it's not all that necessary. I do have some hold down clamps and stuff like that I use a uh, hold fast. I uh, do use a hardy tool at times for cut off, but it's not totally necessary for bladesmithing. Anyway, we'll do a ball bearing test just to see what kind of rebound it has. Take care of some of these sharp edges. It's got some very sharp edges. Want to round them a little bit in key places where I like to use. I do like a sharp edge sometimes for certain tasks, but for the most part, I want round edges. I like the long flat horn, that's something that I don't have on either one of my anvils. So that's new to me. So let's set up for a ball bearing test, see what kind of rebound it has. We'll compare it to my antique Fisher and my Calvary horseshoe anvil. Let's see what it looks like. Now this is their 66 pound cast steel anvil. I don't know how the cast iron anvils will perform, but this is supposed to be their cast steel anvil. But as you can see, the rebound on this anvil is just as good, if not better, than my antique anvil or my old horseshoe anvil. But right now what I wanna do is clean up these edges. I don't like this blue paint, I'm gonna knock that off. And I'm sure we'll be able to see some of that fill of material, that sort of thing. And then we'll set up and do some forging. Let's get to it.
So let's talk about the cons first. It's small. I mean, it's quite smaller than my other two anvils. But when I first started out hammering blades, I was using a piece of railroad track, which is much lighter than this. You can still forge blades on it. That's why I just stuck with some simple forging, nothing fancy there, some cleaver shaped object. And as I've already mentioned, these holes, I could probably make this hardy hole work uh, by doing some filing and die grinding to get this where my hardy tools would fit it because it is under probably a 16. But for bladesmithing, not really needed. I don't use the hardy and pritchell hardly at all. I don't hardly use my pritchell hole at all. I got a hole down that I used to use a lot when I was hand feathering, splitting feather billets. But I do that with a machine now. Hardy hole if you want to cut something or, or you got a uh, swedge tool you want to stick in there. I do use one in my big anvil. If I want to uh, do some swedge work there, set my guard shoulders and stuff like that, but not absolutely necessary. The finish is okay. Um, it could be a little better, but it's not too bad. Um, just a couple places there where you can tell where they doctored it up, but pretty good casting. Other than the weight and some of that stuff with the, the Pritchell and Hardy, let's talk about the good points that I like about it. It is super flat and finished very nicely. The, the surface is finished very nicely. And the simple forging that I was doing, not one ding, anything on it. Of course, I didn't miss anywhere, and which will cause that on any anvil. It's very nice and flat. It held up well for just simple forging, which is what most bladesmiths are going to be doing anyway. And this is a very cheap anvil. For the price, it's going to be hard to beat something like this. And they've got bigger anvils. It's uh, very economical. I mean, you, you, you can get an anvil this size for way cheaper, a third of the price. I'm just saying, if uh, you're short on funds, financially challenged, like a lot of us are, it's hard to beat. Now you have to excuse the temporary stand I had it sitting on. It needs to be mounted on a good heavy duty stand. That'll help a ton. This will work just fine. I mean, you got a nice wide face, which is something else I like. That's why I like my Farrier's anvil. It has a wide face. This old antique anvil has a long face, but I like these wide faces. You can really work on your flats and, and uh, do some good work there. I've never used a flat horn which is something new for me, which I'm looking forward to trying out. I did finish these edges and got them smooth and rounded. Took that ugly blue paint off of there and, and I oiled it down. Like I said, Vivar sent this to me. I don't get anything out of it as far as sales. There's a 5% discount code in the description. I get nothing back for that. I got this anvil. So you can see what I did. You can see the rebound test. It held right there with my antique anvil and my modern Farrier's anvil. It's hard to beat. Anyway, I hope this helps you. And if you got any questions, leave a comment below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description. Again, 5% discount on this anvil. Thanks for watching.